You've been wondering what to look for in an angle grinder? Hey there, Daniel Hartman, Community Machine Recycle, New Brunswick. We've got a whole selection here from the kind of thing years ago you might have inherited from your grandfather if you were fortunate enough. And this was referred to as a rat tail. This is a seven inch grinder. It would use a disc, basically this, this size here. And the limitations on this, you always have to have two hands, as you can see I almost dropped it there. And you always have to have your finger on the trigger. Well actually this does have a lock. It's uh, not the most convenient and it's a really heavy grinder to be working with all day. It's the kind of thing, you know, your grandfather and his friends might have used at the foundry back in the old days. But uh, the other limitation is you would not really use a grinder like this for zip cutting, both because it's rare to have seven zip cuts around and that would just be a weapon. So more common, this is a smaller rat tail. This is uh, Walter. Actually, this one here is a Black & Decker, and the regular Black & Decker would now be more like the Black & Decker industrial line, if they still have that. I'm not sure. So this rat tail grinder, oh, gotta watch there, it's got the, it's got a little button here that allows that to turn 90 degrees. So if you're using a sanding drum on here, you'd be able to turn that, which for someone doing a lot of polishing applications in food grade, stainless steel, graining material. This is a really handy grinder. Now the reason, if you look at it closely there, there's little segments around here. Always want to be using a grinder guard with these when using grinding discs. So the grinding disc, or the grinding guard, has a quick release function, and it's got this little tab here. You can watch it raise and lower as it goes around all the detents there. So the nice thing about this, you leave this screw snug and you can move it to these different detents. So if you're cutting down here like this, it allows that grinder guard to be moved quickly. There's some better designs on the market now. I've seen kind of different ones by Metabo who actually make the Walter line. There's some with a little indentation, a little lever, and then it locks the guard in all those different positions which is a really great feature. You don't have to loosen that and play around, especially if you're out in the field and you don't have a screwdriver to adjust it. It's a really great feature. Another thing to look for in a grinder is a 5 8 coarse thread. Now, the thread on this grinder is the same as a seven inch grinder. This is a six inch. This one here is a five inch. I would not recommend any grinder smaller than five inch for a general use. Sometimes, there are smaller grinders, like four and a half and smaller, which if you're really in a specialized application in terms of doing something on a really small scale, it could be the right thing. But for general application, six inch is really good. And as I say, the five eighths coarse thread is nice because then when you get different sanding backing accessories, or if you want to put a drum on here for sanding or any kind of other add-on this is the most universal thread style as far as North America. Now it's funny, this Bosch, one of my other favorite grinders, this actually has come in both styles as far as a metric spindle thread and a 5 8 coarse thread. So it's important to watch what these things have. The other thing that will drive you crazy, and I know growing up on farms, my neighbor would just buy the cheapest grinder possible and they never use the same wrenches, which there is a little hack. If the wrench, if this spanner does not go in both of those holes, if you have one that's close, you can go like that and just put the one pin in and the other one out. But you're going to wear these tools out quicker. Now, ideally, if you've got good hand strength, these grinding discs usually don't lock on that tight. The seven inch, if you're using that for a long time, especially if it gets damp and a little bit corrosion, you're going to need that wrench. For this grinder here, this is another Walter Metabo grinder. You can see it's got two slots here and it's got a little spring-loaded piece in the back of this nut and it's got a neural. So the idea is this you just hand tighten, which I don't actually like this as much as 
this free knot because this thing, while it theoretically doesn't get tightened, every turn it takes a lot of effort because this spring loaded piece is always giving a lot of resistance to turning. So that's one thing I don't really like about the style. Now grinding discs are self tightening because they are working against this thread the way they rotate. So you don't have to worry. Same as your lawnmower blades, your self tightening. Someone was, I mean, usually people are engineering this stuff. You don't need to put that back on. So that's a good feature. Now I wanted to compare the difference and why I really love the six inch grinder. Because if you see this one here, it's got an ergonomic shape. Now there's all kinds of manufacturers. I know it was rare years ago to find a six inch grinder in an economy line. Like this, I've seen Porter Cable makes them and all kinds of different companies. And if you're gonna buy an abrasive, it doesn't cost that much for a six inch. And the advantage is anyone who's ever done calculation on circles knows as your diameter goes up, your surface area goes up exponentially. So while it's a good buy in terms of getting a lot more abrasive, if you're trying to cut any kind of length and keep a straight cut, you've got more material here. And as the blade wears down, it's a lot more forgiving that your disc is going to stay larger, longer, and it's also going to cut deeper anytime you're trying to cut stuff up. So there's tons of advantages in having a six inch disc. It doesn't cost a whole lot more than any of the five inch stuff. A lot of times it's not as much a consumer line, but you can find all kinds of welding supplies. Often, if you're in an area where there is a little bit of industry, there's typically your welding supply, but then there's also usually Someone that'll drive around in a truck, they'll have all kinds of welding supplies. And the thing you want to look for in any kind of abrasive, like this is one a sales guy dropped off. This is a tie pan, never tried it. I'm not too excited about it. But notice it is made in the European Union. This one here, Rhodius, made in Germany. We've got a Walter here, and it is, I know I looked at it earlier. Well, I can't see on that one. This one here, Sate, made in USA. So all these good brands. Oh, this one here, made in Italy. There we go. All these good brands, they... Yeah, that's made in Italy as well. And this is a different style of Walter. Or no, actually, that's uh, Superflex, made in Germany once again. So those are key indicators as far as quality of bracelets. Years ago, I know... We used to get a lot of abrasives from the hardware store on the farm. And besides the abrasive coming apart, it had a lot of the fiberglass like reinforcing fiber. They would also go all over the place. I remember uh, if I didn't have long sleeves on, I could feel my skin get irritated from the binder in the discs. So it's really worthwhile getting a good quality abrasive. And there are places that sometimes close up and have excess inventory. So it's one of those things sometimes you can find a good deal online or at a flea market. I don't know pricing these days as far as where these things are at since sometimes the price can fluctuate. Now actually I'll give a comparison. That's a six and a seven inch comparison there as far as disc size. And the other thing I want to point out, a lot of these zip cut discs are that one's 45 thousandths of an inch, 0 0.045. This one here, I believe, is a 16. Oh, no, that's 0 0.045. And this one here might be a bit thicker. Anyhow, these blades are thin. And if you get one like this, this is called a depressed center. You can see it's raised there. It's one of those things that I wouldn't have these discs, except I bought them so cheap from a place that had cleared out and, and I ended up buying a box of these for maybe 20 bucks and it was probably $50 worth of blades in there. Probably, probably more. Anyhow, the limitation of these discs here, if anything rubs against that, which will happen, it's, just a matter, it's not a matter of if, it's a matter of when, if anything rubs against there, 
it significantly weakens the disc and this center will have more of a chance of breaking out of the disc and even if the disc jams in a piece of steel often there's all these lessons in zip cutting steel that really end up learned only through doing and it's part of being human to kind of watch because sometimes there'll be a piece of steel it'll start pinching the blade and that center wall have a tendency to tear out because that disc is not flat. So the flat disc is much stronger and you'll also be able to cut with it for a longer period of time because as you get cutting towards the center, you're not going to be able to do anything with that last little bit. I mean, usually your gearbox starts getting in the way as you get close to the center, but even, I don't know if you can see in there, there's a little bit, depending on what you're cutting, if it's a piece narrower than that and you're getting down in there, especially if it's a piece where you're coming in this way here, it's going to start hitting that thing and busting your disc apart. And then you're going to have not just abrasive going everywhere, but all those binders that hold it together, which is really stuff that you don't want to be breathing in. You don't want it spread around. It's just not good stuff as far as our physical health is concerned. Now, one of the other things as far as grinding disc binding, if you notice this one here on the back, it's got a little sticker that says slip clutch. Now these slip clutches, they do work fairly well and you hear the grinder motor go and start to really wind up and it can be, it can be a little uh, edgy as far as an experience. So it's always nice to have a grinder where you can easily flip the, the thumb switch off and Another great feature. This one actually also has a variable speed and I think there's a temperature sensor in it as well to make sure the motor doesn't get burnt out. The variable speed, unless you're doing something really specialized for metal fabricating, it's really overrated. A lot of times these units, they can be temperamental and sometimes I remember getting them repaired years ago and a lot of times the uh, variable speed would just get thrown out because if it was broken, there's a way to just bypass it and uh, get a grinder working again. Now, one thing I like about these grinders, they kept the, the guards the same style over years. So even the older style, the guard is the same as this newer style. And there's a newer style yet, which might have changed a little bit. So that's one thing I always look for in buying a good power tool is something that has been proven in the industry for a little while, then if something does get broken or dropped, I know I've had grinders up on the top of barns working on bale elevators and doing all kinds of things. And you know, if, if a grinder drops from any kind of height, especially onto a concrete surface, it's gonna have some damage. And then it's always nice knowing, well, at least there's spare parts that'll be able to be used for the next grinder. <laughs> and it takes the edge off when those things break. Now, I've been talking a lot about grinding. It's also important to think a lot about stuff like this, which this is one of the best pieces of health equipment that I bought in terms of, it's nice where it's got these cartridge filters that are easy to replace and you buy them in a box quantity. And the nice thing is it's a lot more comfortable so you buy this box, I think it was 25 for these 20 filters. So they're relatively cheap considering it's got a really nice face fit. This is a North, actually you can look at the part number on there for fun if you want. And the advantage is the strap is really heavy, whereas if you buy a conventional dust mask, a lot of time the staples pull out before they're worn out if you're not really careful with them. And if you buy any of the ones with the foam for the face fit, you're usually going to be spending $5 a piece for the filters. And here it's more like a dollar a piece. So you can save five times, you have five times the value out of these then. And the thing, you know, this is somewhat washable. It gets dirty over time. It would have been nice if they did the strap and the body in black, but maybe someone else makes one like that. The other thing, it's good to have a face shield sometimes. It limits the amount of things coming in to 
the breathing area so you also can extend the life of your filter and typically if I was wearing this I'd wear some safety glasses and it'd be nice to wear earmuff type hearing protection but with this I don't find by the time I have my glasses and that and everything else I just usually wear earplugs so that's my safety strategy on grinding. Now the last thing I want to end off with is sanding supplies for grinding. So a lot of times everyone thinks the holy grail is a flat disc like this, but I've really gotten accustomed to using these resin discs and not only they're probably about a seventh of the price of these at least, I think, if you get a good deal on them, but can also do just as good a job and the nice thing about these you can just throw them away and keep a really sharp edge where these when they dull on the edge they just become really rounded over and the major limitation people have with these is if you hit something on the edge a lot of times you'll snag and it'll rip the piece out and then it'll tear the thing apart which the other thing you want to watch the kind of backing pad you have because if you have any there's some, like actually this one here, is a hard plastic, it's a Norton, it's made in Canada. I thought it was gonna be a lot better than it is in terms of, I didn't consider that this type of plastic is very unforgiving and it will break and snag on things if you're not careful where you're standing here. So if there's any sharp edges, it'll dig into this plastic. This one here is a Walter, this is actually interesting is made in Bulgaria of all places and there's a couple things I don't really like about these this piece here is a bit of a die cast piece so it doesn't have a whole lot of strength and it also has a possibility that it could fracture so it's not my favorite but the thing about this material here while it does deform it is a lot less likely to snag than this other type of plastic material I'm not sure what it is so this is my recommended backing as far as the best one that's probably commonly available are these Walter. That's what I got on here. And this also, if you get some stuff that's fairly standard, it's nice because then this wrench is always the same. As I say, if you've got good hand strength, it doesn't take much to just take the disc. Actually, I'll demonstrate here. Just grab a disc like that and take it off it's an easy thing to do same with uh as we put this one on here typically for mounting grinder discs that's all i do there and then to take it off you just want to be careful you don't open your hand up on that edge of the guard there so it's one of those acquired skills as far as getting the hand strength but also also the, the knowledge of how to just give it a good twist. Now, if you're looking for these discs, you can find them around the hardware store, but the most economical way, usually you can get them in a cardboard package of 25, or maybe just a plastic pack like this. And the grit I like the best, usually been using these ones that are 50 grit. They work really well. And if I'm doing something more specialized, I might have a variety of grits where this is 120 grit, but I vary over very rarely use these and sometimes even something more coarse than this as far as I think I've used up to 16 grit which is really it's uh, pretty choppy stuff the nice thing is if you got something that's really scaly and rusty where if you're trying to use an abrasive disc like this it'll really load up and it'll just get gross where you start using just like this, there's 16 grit. If you have something that's really scaly, it'll clean a lot of material off really fast, and you just start changing discs, and eventually the project gets done, and everyone goes home happy. So, can't think of what else I'd say. I think some of the interesting grinders to look at that are coming out on the market. I saw Bosch has a new design for a quick change spindle, but it's a completely different proprietary system. So. Then you're more tied into buying Bosch abrasives and if the system doesn't take off, you might have something that you can change really quick, but you might not find anything you can actually afford to put on there. 
and it might be more affordable just to change to a different system. So I think there's some cool technology coming up that's worth looking at. As I say, I've had good luck with these older Bosch units, which were typically made in Germany, and a lot of the metabolic stuff also made in Germany. Black & Decker was often made in USA for the older or industrial lines. And the ones I would look at today, I don't really know what to say in terms of, this is more if I was industrial running a shop, I'd look at these. There's also Fine, F-E-I-N, also another German brand. Otherwise, I'd probably start looking at Bosch to see what they have, but a lot of it's globally sourced and as I said earlier, if you look at something that's been on the market for a while, that's got some good product support, that you'll likely be able to buy the same model a few years down the road if your grinder breaks from an accident or just happens to have some kind of flaw that's not covered by warranty. It's always a good approach. So hopefully that helps. Please like and subscribe. Hit the notification button for new videos and comment below on all your questions that I didn't answer. I'm going to try and list all the key points in terms of things like the 5 8 port spindle nut, quick adjust guard, uh, having a thumb switch, and staying away from these rat tail grinders, and good features to look for like the slip clutch, and different brands that I feel would be the highest quality as far as someone using a grinder every day and this end you can set a really high bar in terms of what might be the best thing to look for and also have something to compare against in terms of knowing where you feel like you're getting some good eco economy for your operation. Thanks so much for watching and uh, all the best.